Well, good morning and happy Easter to all of you at home. Um, let's start with the traditional way of celebrating Easter. Alleluia, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. What powerful and exciting words uh, to make part of our day today. He is risen. Um, happy Easter to all of you wherever you are. I hope you're safe and well. Um, and I hope that this is a day where, in spite of being separated, the fellowship and love of God will bind us and remind us of, of the love he has for each of us and that we have for one another. I wonder if you took some time just to look at the film clip, imagining what the resurrection was like. It's from the film The Passion of the Christ. Uh, and it's a really interesting and quite powerful moment at the end of such quite a gruelling film, frankly. Um, um, at the end of such a gruelling film, it's, it's wonderful to have that little moment at the end that just says, yes, you know what, he, he rose. This didn't overcome him. He rose uh, from the dead at the end. And it's a lovely sort of imaginative uh, way about how it could have happened. And, and in many ways, very faithful to the Bible texts that we have. And it's important for us because we can't. Uh, it's very difficult for us to imagine those things. Those events are so far away. And some of those uh, so those writing is really old. You know, those those stories are really old. So it's very difficult sometimes for us to place ourselves uh, in that in, in that story. But reading and rereading these stories, we're reminded how it redefines reality. It redefines how we think about life, how we think about death and how our relationship with God could be. And that's that's at the heart of this, isn't it? So if you're looking for hope, and I think a lot of us are at the moment, and if we're looking for a better story, uh, a new horizon than the one that we, you know, a better story than the one that we're in at the moment, uh, then you've come to the right place because Easter is about new life and it's about hope, isn't it? And it's not just faint or wish fulfilment, it's hope based on truths. And I think that's really important. I wanted to draw out a couple of things from the account in Matthew, which uh, for many scholars is the earliest account based on even earlier writings, which we don't have. Uh, but they were based on nice uh, earlier uh, accounts of the story. I want to look at a little bit at some of the detail, uh, but also the human response, which is actually what the story is about, our response to what God has done for us. We read that the two Marys are heading to the tomb. Other accounts say that they're bringing spices to complete the embalming, but the key is that they are going to the tomb. And we all know which tomb it was. It was the one that was being guarded. Verse four tells us that there were guards there. And, and that's because there was a deal of fear among some of the Jewish leaders that the disciples would somehow smuggle Jesus's body away and then claim he had risen from the dead as was promised. Now, if they had done that, of course, somebody would have just said, well, show us the body. Where, where is he? Uh, which is what people wanted to know. So it's, it's interesting that Pilate agrees, though, isn't it? I mean, Pilate has already checked that Jesus is dead. He's, he's had a centurion go and double check that. But for the sake of risking further trouble in Jerusalem and for keeping his uh, mass, his Roman masters uh, uh, happy, he, he uh, makes sure that he is covered. But on the way, there is an earthquake and an angel of the Lord rolls back the stone covering the tomb entrance. And he addresses the women because this is for them. They are the first witnesses. How exciting must that have been? And he says to them, he is not here, he is risen. That's, that's really important. He invites them to come and see where Jesus had been laid. And this is what they are to report to, report to the other disciples, that Jesus isn't there. They're at the right tomb. This is where they laid him. This is where they buried him. This is where they embalmed him. But Jesus isn't there. The guards are there. This was the tomb that was sealed. This is where the guards were set so that nobody could escape or try to smuggle his body out. But Jesus isn't there. God's power transcends anything that we can think of. It's, 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 su it's such an awesome moment in, in human history, isn't it? And so their response is probably how we would feel. Afraid. I think we'd be afraid if we turned up. I don't know if, I've, if you ever misplaced something that you know somebody else needed. I think I'd be, we're all a bit terrified of doing that, aren't we? Somebody says to you, have you got my such and such? And you go, oh, I can't remember where I put it. But there's those moments, aren't there? We say, hold on a minute. I expected Jesus to be here and he's not. And you're lost in this moment of confusion and fear. 
he's not here we thought he would be and then the realization dawns this is an angel of the lord telling them telling them that jesus is risen the things that he has promised the things that he has told them about have come true and sometimes there's that sense isn't there that i didn't expect it to happen and it's and it's happened and now i'm completely overawed by it all and sometimes there's a sense of disbelief. What, 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 if, what if I met him and I still couldn't get my head around it? And those are important things, aren't they? Because they've crossed. They've crossed a boundary, a boundary into a new world, a new reality. They've crossed from a place where Jesus, a, a dead man, very dead, rose from the dead. They've crossed into, they've just taken their first footsteps into this new world, this new reality that, Jesus has made possible. So they are rightly afraid. I mean, what sort of person could do that? What sort of person could overcome death? I mean, sometimes we find ourselves watching uh, people like Paul McKenna and hypnotists and, and things like that doing amazing things. And we're sort of slightly in awe uh, of their ability. But this goes far beyond that. This goes way beyond uh, anything like that. And, we st and they're rightly afraid. How could he do it? What kind of power was at work within him? But the other response is joy. What a confused time this must be. They are just absolutely, well, hold on a minute. This is terrifying. And yet if it's true, this realisation dawns on them and they discover that actually if G G they're making sense of the promises that Jesus made, that he would rise. And if that's true, then their teacher, their friend, their master, their healer, whom they had seen crucified, dead and buried, is no longer there, if it's all true, after all, as the angel says. So I'm sure we would find ourselves in the same sort of place, this mix of, of fear of what God is capable of and joy that he's able to do it at all and wants to do it for us. And then as they're on their way, the angel sends them off they meet the risen Jesus and in quite a matter of fact and really low key way, in spite of everything that he has achieved, what he had gone through, what it has cost him, the pain he endured, the betrayal he suffered, the indignity and injustice of it all. He greets them with a simple hello, greetings. He is with his friends again. The relationship that was temporarily broken has now been restored. In fact, it's now going to become richer and deeper. And then reassuring them to carry on to Galilee. Do not be afraid. Those who know the Lord Jesus, yes, we, we, we are in the position of knowing somebody who's tremendous, awesome power, but also doesn't want us to be terrified or fearful. It's a position of a life of awe, of awe of somebody who could overcome death. He reassures them, carry on to Galilee, go and tell my brothers, there they will see me. And there's a lot of seeing in this story. The women see an angel of the Lord. They see an empty tomb. Soon afterwards, they see the risen Christ for themselves. And later, they will see the brothers who will also meet the risen Jesus Christ for themselves. Their witness to us is super important because they wrote it down and passed it on and they suffered for it so that this message could get through. And it's how they responded that helps us. Fear and joy. Fear because of what Jesus had done, that he had died, that death couldn't handle him, nor could the grave hold on to him. And we should genuinely be in awe of what Jesus did and who he is but he did it to bring peace between sinful man and holy, loving God. And also joy, because in spite of it all, all Jesus' first words are to restore friendship, to reassure faint hearts, to lift up those who are, in, who are worried or at loss. And that should also make us live in awe. How could he do so much and yet be concerned so much for little you and little me? Well, the answer is because he loves us. We can choose, therefore, to live in fear, fear of the world, fear of what's happening right now, what may happen in the future. Or we can choose 
our own joys and to find peace and meaning in all sorts of pursuits and ideas. But it's only knowing and loving this one man, Jesus, that both make sense. The life, fear, awe and joy all come together and that we can find ourselves at peace in relationship, in friendship, in companionship with Jesus Christ, who died and rose again. I'd like to thank you for listening this morning. It's uh, a really exciting time to be thinking about Easter at times where we could be worried uh, and, and actually where fear may be creeping in at the door. But hear the words of Jesus. Do not be afraid. He is risen. Amen. I've got a confession uh, that I think it would be really good for us to share at this time. Um, and there's a little response. Uh, when I say, in your mercy, forgive us, we can all say together, Lord, hear us and help us. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now come to our prayers this Easter Sunday morning. When I say, risen Lord Jesus, please add, we give our lives to you today. Lord God, our Father, by whose power our Lord Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, we rejoice and celebrate that he who was dead is alive, that he who was buried is risen that death is conquered and we are free. Jesus has won the victory. Lord, make us aware of the presence of the risen Jesus in our lives. May your church proclaim the good news. He is risen. In the power of our risen Lord, may we lead people out of darkness into your wonderful light. Risen Lord Jesus, we give our lives to you today. Lord Jesus, as we rejoice this day, we pray for peace in our world, that we may rise above all that would cause strife and conflict, that your victory over the powers of evil may be allowed to work in your world. Risen Lord Jesus, we give our lives to you today. Risen Lord, as you appeared to Mary in the garden, to the disciples in the upper room, to the travellers on the road to Emmaus, be known among us, be in our homes, wherever we are. May we be those who truly walk in your presence and peace, sharing your light and your joy. Risen Lord Jesus, we give our lives to you today. We remember before you all who walk in darkness and fear. We pray for all who are weighed down, all who are heavily laden, those who are unwell, who are depressed and without hope, for all those who sadly are approaching death. 
for all those caring for the terminally ill in our hospitals, in our communities, in our care homes, for those in hospices. Risen Lord Jesus, we give our lives to you today. And now we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen <laughs> 